Our today's topic is vernal keratoconjunctivitis. Vernal keratoconjunctivitis VKC, is an atopic condition of the external ocular surface. It characteristically affects young males in hot, dry climates in a seasonal manner, however this is not always the rule. The first description of VKC is credited to Arlt who described three cases of perilimbal swelling in young patients in 1846. In 1899 Trantis described the limbal white dots that had been previously demonstrated by Horner. In 1908, Gabrielides identified eosinophils in conjunctival secretions as well of the peripheral blood of VKC patients. In 1910, Trantis characterized the spectrum of corneal changes seen in VKC. A personal or family history of atopia is seen in a large proportion of VKC patients. VKC was originally thought to be due to a solely IgE-mediate reaction via mast cell release. It has now been shown that IgE is not enough to cause the varied inflammatory response that is seen with VKC. Activated eosinophils are thought to play a significant role and these can be shown consistently in conjunctival scrapings, however mononuclear cells and neutrophils are also seen. Additional attention has been given to the CD4T helper 2 driven type 4 hypersensitivity with immunomodulators. Thought has been given to a possible endocrine method as well as there is a decrease in symptoms and prevalence after puberty. A hereditary association has been suggested, but no direct genetic associations have been made. VKC is seen more often in patients who have atopic family histories, but no clear correlation with specific genetic loci has been elucidated. VKC is characterized by symptoms consisting of severe itching, photophobia, foreign body sensation, mucus discharge often described as ropey, blepharospasm, and blurring of vision. In a 1988 review, Buckley coined the term, morning misery, which described the active disease state of patients with severe discomfort, blepharospasm and mucus discharge leaving them incapacitated upon awakening and frequently resulting in lateness for school. It is typically bilateral but may be asymmetric in nature. While VKC is typically seasonally recurrent, hence the name vernal meaning springtime, 23% of patients may have a perennial form of them disease and many may have recurrences outside of the springtime. The signs of VKC can be divided into conjunctival, limbal and corneal signs. Conjunctival signs include diffuse conjunctival injection and upper tarsal giant papillae. These are discrete greater than 1 mm in diameter that characteristically have flattened tops which sometimes demonstrate stain with fluorescein. Additionally, these giant papillae can sometimes be seen near the limbus, and while relatively uncommon symblepharin formation and conjunctival fibrosis can occur. Limbal signs include thickening and opacification of the limbal conjunctiva as well as gelatinous appearing and sometimes confluent limbal papillae. Perilimbal Horner Trantis dots are focal white limbal dots consisting of degenerated epithelial cells and eosinophils. Limbal disease can result in a limbal stem cell deficiency which can lead to panis formation with corneal neovascularization. Corneal signs vary according to the severity of the disease process. Punctate epithelial erosions or keratitis can coalesce into macro erosions of the epithelium. Plaques containing fibrin and mucus can accumulate into macro erosions forming shield ulcers. Corneal neovascularization can ensue and resolution can leave a characteristic ring-like scar. A waxing and waning gray-white lipid depositing in the peripheral, superficial stroma can occur and is known as pseudogerontoxin. Keratoconus has been shown to be more prominent in VKC patients as well, possibly due to increased eye rubbing of chronically irritated patients. The main differential diagnosis to be considered is atopic keratoconjunctivitis AKC. AKC typically has an older age of onset in the second to fifth decade, as opposed to onset prior to age 10 with VKC. Conjunctival involvement is classically on the upper tarsus in VKC and on the lower tarsus in AKC. Additionally, AKC is typically more chronic in nature and more commonly results in scarring of the cornea and conjunctival cicatrization, whereas VKC is typically more self-limiting. Additional differential diagnoses to consider depending on history and physical would be seasonal allergic conjunctivitis and giant papillary conjunctivitis. Removal of any and all possible allergens as well as conservative management such as cool compresses and lid scrubs make up the first line of therapy. 
A topical antihistamine only may work in mild cases. Topical mast cell stabilizers, chromalin sodium, nidocromil sodium, and ladoxamide are typically used with topical antihistamines and have been shown to be effective in moderate presentations of VKC. Mast cell stabilizers have a loading period to reach their full therapeutic effect. If seasonal recurrence is known, it is suggested that mast cell stabilization therapy be initiated prior to the season in which symptoms are encountered and continued throughout the season. Dual action agents with both H1 blocking mechanism and mast cell stabilization have the benefits of working immediately and having long-term disease modifying effects. Topical corticosteroids are typically the most effective. High pulse dose with quick tapering and use of low absorptions corticosteroids, fluoromethylone, lodoprednol, remexalone, etc. is preferred when using topical corticosteroid therapy. Oral corticosteroids can be considered in sight-threatening conditions. Injection of local corticosteroid into the upper tarsal papillae can sometimes offer short-term relief as well. Long-term immunomodulation with steroid-sparing agents such as cyclosporin and tacrolimus is often needed. Topical cyclosporina in concentrations of 0.05% to 2% has been shown to decrease inflammatory cytokines and the signs and symptoms of treated VKC patients. Tacrolimus 0.1% topically has also shown to improved signs and symptoms of disease, with one study showing improvement even in patients unresponsive to 0.1% topical cyclosporin. Additionally, adult patients with VKC may respond more favorably to topical cyclosporin therapy. Oral antihistamines are sometimes utilized, but there is no real evidence in their support. There is at least one report of the successful use of omalizumab, an anti-IgE monoclonal antibody, in a patient with VKC recalcitrant to other treatment modalities. Generally VKC is a rather benign and self-limiting disease that may resolve with age or spontaneously at puberty. Nonetheless, the sometimes debilitating nature of this disease when it is active necessitates therapy to control symptoms. Complications typically arise from occasional corneal scarring and the unsupervised use of topical corticosteroids. In some patients' symptoms may persist beyond childhood, which in some cases may represent a conversion to an adult form of atopic keratoconjunctivitis. This persistence into adulthood has been shown to be as high as 12%.